Okay, let me know if you can see me now. I think I still think it's not going to stay up, but what I'll probably have to do is flip back and forth. I may not see questions if I flip back and forth. But this is the best I can do right now. Kathy, can you see the PowerPoint and me? Kevin. Okay. All right, I'm just going to keep it still for now. I'll take the mic off. I'll be I'll be here though. I'm just going to keep it up. Hello everyone again and welcome. That the voice was the voice of Melissa Armour that you heard uh, just a little bit ago and we will be starting promptly in now just two minutes. Two minutes start time here at Online Trader Central. I want to welcome each and every one of you to the presentation today and the folks that just joined us. Uh, Spencer, JD, Philip, uh, Dieter, Jude, Neo and others scrolling up here at random. Mr. Puts and Calls Jr. Z Steve is here with us. Car Guy is back. Marvin and others. This is Online Trader Central. Welcome uh, Jimmy K-U-L-Y-N-A, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Again, we do want to thank each and every one of you for your time and your participation here today. Uh, this is a presentation that is scheduled to start in two minutes, and we hope that you'll uh, be able to stay with us and enjoy the presentation by Melissa Armo, the host and presenter today from thestocksmith.com. <coughs> and again, this is Online <coughs> Trader Central starting in two minutes. Again, two minutes. Online Trader Central. Hello everyone and welcome. This is Kevin with Online Trader Central. It's time to begin, so let's bring out the percussion section. Drummers, are you ready? Drummers. Okay, and please cue the trumpet. And after that, ladies and gentlemen, it is exactly 4.30. Please put your hands together and welcome a host and presenter today from the thestocksmith.com. Hello, you can see me live here. I was trying to make it so that you could see me live throughout the whole entire presentation and see my PowerPoint, but as someone pointed out, you actually can only see a portion of the PowerPoint, and as I flip through the slides, you're going to lose me. So I'll come back to myself in a little bit, but hello there. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing this. I'll figure this out going forward for future webinars here to how you can see me and also see a better picture of the slide. But I thought this was a nice experiment here to do so that you could actually see that I'm a real life person. And actually, here's my beautiful living room in New York. Uh, it's a rainy, rainy, cloudy day, so you can't really see outside the window. But this is where I trade. Actually, where I'm sitting right now is where I trade every day. Uh, this is my desk. So welcome, my name is Melissa Armo and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh LLC. If you have questions, I will see them as we go through the presentation today. 
And I trade. I'm a day trader. And as I said, this is really where I work every day. This is where I trade. And I short stocks. Okay, that is my main, main focus. And I trade based on technical analysis. And it's really an advanced method of technical analysis. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So if you'd like more information, you can go to my website at uh, www.thestockswish.com. You can also email me at melissa.thestockswish.com if you'd like more information. And Kathy is going to put that up there as well. So can you make money in the market using advanced technical analysis skills? The answer is yes. I don't look at fundamentals at all. I really don't even look at anything to do with fundamentals. So the fact is that you can be successful in the market and make money on a consistent basis using technicals. Now, the thing that I use, though, is advanced technicals. Understanding how to read price in the correct direction is a very important and key ingredient in profiting the market. Set yourself apart from the world of novice traders and investors by becoming an expert in technical analysis. Experts have knowledge, do their homework, and read information in real time in the form of price patterns and charts, which is what we're going to look at today. And, and I love charts. I mean, I really, really, really love charts. Becoming an expert in technical analysis is a vital ingredient to becoming a successful and and if you want to be successful and be a professional trader, you've got to have this. And I don't care if you want to be an investor or a trader or a day trader, swing trader, you need to learn how to read charts. What a company's current value or worth is, is always reflected in the price right now, like what it's doing right now. Price patterns and charts hold the key to making decisions ahead of time and in the moment to profit and profit substantially. Now, I'm a day trader, although we will talk about a swing trade that I called in here today, but I really focus on day trading. So making money in the market really involves making timely decisions based on price. Price supersedes everything else, even fundamentals. It's, it's about really making the time to trade on a higher level. I know that everybody wants to put indicators on their charts and they feel that by doing this, they will have the immediate answers to the questions uh, by just looking at specific indicators. If it was that easy for us to look at just one indicator or two indicators, then it, we would just all have that indicator and it would be just as easy as that to know how to trade. Can you use indicators on your charts to help assist you in your trading? Yes. We'll talk about that more later, but there's really not one specific indicator that I could say that you could use that would tell you everything you need to know or even 50% of what you need to know in the market. Ultimately, people go to school to learn how to train just like they do anything else. What's the other option? If you don't want to go to school to learn how to trade, how can you do it? Well, you can take the road that I took, okay? You can trade yourself in the market and lose money to you figure it out. Now, let me tell you something, and let me look at you. You can see my face here now. That is a harder road than the road to learn from someone else. I was having a discussion the other day with someone and we were talking about it. It's like you've got two options and I'm, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. You can either A, go and keep taking class after class after class after class in a million places until you find somebody really, really good that can teach you actually how to make money in the market or you can just trade the market and figure it out yourself until however long it takes. But I will tell you that it's a cheaper road and an easier road to actually take classes until you connect with someone that can teach you how to do it. Now, there are people out there that trade that are successful. I'm one of them. There are other people, too. Are there people that are teaching classes that are not successful? Yes, of course there are. You know, there's, there's everything that exists out there on the planet. But the fact is that all of that is still an easier road than just actually figuring out yourself. Because the market will just take everything it can from you until you figure it out. And when I look back at the time I spent in the years that I was losing until I figured it out, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I would do it again. <laughs> I mean, I, I think at this point with what's happening in my career, I, I, things are going so well that I might. But then again, maybe not. You know, it was, it was a number of years of stress that I really had no guarantee was ever going to pull past it as far as the timing of pulling past it, except for the fact that I believed in myself. But I will tell you that the market took more money from me personally than any amount of classes. If I took classes for the next 25 years, it wouldn't be as much money as I lost in the market while I taught myself what I know. So, and many people financially just wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, I know that people wouldn't be able to do what I did financially and emotionally. And so the thing is that I talked to a lot of people and, and I'm gonna talk about this next, you know, what are your options and why should I learn, you know, why should you come and learn from me 
and I thought I'd actually write it down and talk about this before I talk about the topic today. How am I different, okay, and why I learned from me? Uh, because I, I did it in the market myself. Because I lost money, though I figured it out. And I didn't give up until I did. And I lost a lot. And I never knew if I'd ever make it, except for the fact that I believed in myself. So how am I different and why learn from me? Number one, I trade the stock market myself daily. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, as long as I get a setup. Number two, I created the method I teach, which I'm gonna talk about today. Number three, I teach and trade my own method, no other method. In other words, I'm not teaching and trading some method I don't do myself. I only teach and trade what I do. I also don't teach or trade any other strategies but one, because that's all I believe in in the market, which we're going to talk about today, which is based on technical analysis. And also, I prefer one directional bias, which is shorting. Okay, I like to short. I only go long if there's nothing to short, which is rare. I only take one trade a day, maybe two. I only have one top pick each day. I usually take one trade a day. That as well is very unique. So you would never have some, any substantial losses with me by just taking one trade a day, even if it didn't work. Like, let's just say the top pick I like doesn't work. Then you just lose in one trade, okay? Whereas many, many trading rooms are calling trades all day long to 4 o'clock. I only trade in the morning. I'm done every day by 11 a.m., and that's it. I also, another reason to learn from me is I have accurately called the market indexes for the last three years, which is really all that you could go back and watch on YouTube because I've only been posting YouTube videos for three years that you can follow my calls and the QQQ and the SPY. They have been accurate and the market has been challenging to call at times and I've called it extremely well. You can go back and watch every market video I've done for three years. I also am not trying to sell you any other method or strategy but what I personally know and do. Okay, there's reasons again why I stand out from other educators. That's what I'm talking to you about first here today so you stay and listen to what I have to say or see that your time is worthwhile to spend with me. The other thing is I made the system for myself. I never made the system to teach anyone. I don't think it would have been as good if I had because I wouldn't have had the same personal investment. The personal investment I had in, in the system was to figure it out for myself to make money to profit in the market. And so therefore, that's one of the reasons it's good. I also don't hold anything back in the class. It's not like you are going to miss something. Everything I teach in the class is everything I know about how to day trade gaps, and I actually don't hold anything back. So you could take my class, and you don't need to trade with me in the room. You can actually trade by yourself after the class. You don't need to learn anything separate. Also, number 11, I'm honest. I think that's worth pointing out. Number 12, I'm making money, which, you know, it's challenging in the market for many, many people. But once you know what to do, it's quite frankly, it's easy. So it's easy for me now because I've been trading for seven years. So I am making money and I also did it on my own and I persevered until I made it. And I think this is one of the best things that you can learn from me is that you must believe in yourself. You must persevere when the hard times come, whenever they are, whether it has to do with trading or in life. And if you do and you believe in yourself, you can make it. So I'm very passionate about what I do. I'm very passionate about my trading. I'm passionate about technical analysis. I'm passionate about my system. I'm passionate about teaching and the market because I did it myself and I love what I do, okay? So these are reasons to stay and listen to me talk tonight or maybe reach out to me if you're interested in anything I have to say after we're done with the webinar, okay? And I just thought that was uh, noteworthy because I've talked to so many people and I know that people have been through the ringer uh, with other places. I get that. But ultimately, and the point I was trying to make is that it's still a cheaper road to learn from someone else, even if you have to take several classes to you find someone like me, rather than actually do it yourself in the market. Okay. All right. So now let's get into the meat and potatoes, and then I'll go back so you can see me talk some more. What is technical analysis? The methods used to analyze securities and make investment decisions fall into two very broad categories. Number one, fundamental analysis, which is not what I do. That's something that, for example, Kramer does, okay, if you've ever watched him on TV. And the other category is technical analysis, which is the way that I trade. Now, fundamental analysis involves analyzing the characteristics of a company in order to estimate its value. Technical analysis takes a completely different approach. It doesn't care one bit about the value of a company or a commodity. Technicians, sometimes called chartists, which is me, that's what I am, are only interested in the price movements in the market or specific stocks. 
So you really have to train your brain to read price action. That's how you do it. And the best way that I can describe it is that you're training your brain to read charts, which is the movement of candlesticks, which we'll talk about. But really, what are those candlesticks? And we're going to look at charts today. The candlesticks are money. That's what it is. So you're reading the movement of the money in the market and you're training your brain to do that. It's like reading a language or learning a language. You have to learn the language of money. It's the language of price and the language of money in the market. Now, at the end, we're going to talk about the, the U.S. stock market, the QQQ and the SPY indexes. The fact is the market's higher, okay? And how do I know that? Because I know how to read the language of money in the market. I have this new method that I use which is based on advanced technical analysis that is, can show me how to read the money in the market. And it's a pattern. It's a pattern that exists in the market and it exists in stocks and you can also use it for ETFs. Understanding how to read price is so critical to create substantial gains in your trading because you really do need to have consistent and substantial gains in trading to cover all the costs of trading because there are costs involved. You must pay platform fees, commissions to a broker, and occasionally you will have a loss in the market, which is part of the odds of doing this. And you have to be able to cover those losses and the expenses and pay yourself. So you have to have gains. The gains have to be substantial and they have to be consistent. What do you need to look for in a chart to know whether to take a trade, what is important and what is not important? What is important is price. And it is what the price is doing right now and your ability to be able to predict what it's going to do in the near future if you're a day trader. Now, if you're a swing trader or core trader, you have to have the ability to predict what the price is gonna do at some point in the future. You don't necessarily have to have the correct timing that it has to be in the day. But as a day trader, I need to predict that this stock is going to go to a certain number at such and such a point on the chart on the day. And if I short it, that means I'm actually betting that the stock will go down on the day. Because that's the only way I'm gonna make money shorting. Okay, so I'm betting What's important is that the price of the movement of the stock that I'm taking the short in is going to go down in the day. That's important for me. So what is important to short or, or, or what am I looking for in a short? I'm looking for panic. Like this guy here, he's absolutely is going crazy. Uh, he's falling out of this bucket here. He looks like he's almost falling off a cliff. And it's really about the idea of panic that makes you money when you short in the market. It's the kind of panic that I'm looking for to short into that is going to make profit because again, I'm betting that the stock price is going to go down on the day. So what is really important in the chart, I'm showing you here what this is. This is, uh, this is a stock we're going to go over. This is a one minute chart though. And I, and we're going to go over this later, but just want to show you, this is an idea of selling action where the stock open here on a one minute chart at approximately, let's just say 1420 ish. I'm not being exact here, but I'm just giving you a rough estimate where the stock opened on the day at 930 at approximately a price of $14 and 20 some cents a share. And within 20 minutes of the open, the stock price has plummeted. It's gone down almost a dollar. What makes a stock do that? This is panic and this is selling action. Now what I do when I'm looking at the chart is I'm predicting that the price is going to go down. Okay. And then I'm shorting it on the prediction based on the chart analysis that it's going to go down, which I did do on this and I did make money. Okay. Now, if you were looking to do a long, you'd be looking to buy for the upside. But today we're talking about shorting. And the reason that shorting is very uh, enticing to many, many day traders is because of this, this whole move right in here, which again goes back to the panic. It, ha it can happen quickly. There is nothing more panicky than selling. There is nothing more panicky than red in the market, which brings in uh, fear, really, okay? It's fear in investors and people where they get scared, okay? And that's kind of what happened actually in the indexes this morning. The markets gapped down because there's a little bit of fear going on in the market right now or uncertainty. So what is the new method I have to read that a short is going to set up and the price is going to go down and have selling. I have a system that I use to read shorts. It's actually a rating system that you just go through 
and you check off and you tally up the points. You just, it's really actually very simple. You just tally everything up. And the 26 point rating system, I took years to teach myself in the market how to figure out the right stock every day to short, is something that's based on technical analysis. So anyone can do it. You don't have to sit and read earnings reports. You don't have to sit and read downgrades or upgrades. You don't have to watch CNBC or anything on the news. You don't, you don't have to listen to the earnings calls live. You don't have to do any of that. You can roll out of bed in the morning before the open, rate the stock that is gapping, total the points, and see if it rates to do it. Now, a 26 system does not mean it has to get a perfect score. It just means it needs 20 or more. So that's the criteria. I created a 26 system, which would obviously would be a perfect score, but I'm trying to just get 20 of those 26. If I do, I will short it. I will short the stock. Now, for those of you that don't know what a gap is, I'm gonna go over this. A stock or an ETF gaps when the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. That's all that a gap is. Now here was a gap in Michael Kors. The stock closed up here at approximately 60 some dollars at four o'clock Eastern time on the 26th. And then in the next morning when the market opened up at 9.30, the price of the stock had actually gapped down to 49 something or wherever this opened. So this was a gap down. Now this could have rallied on the day or it could have dropped, which is what it did. How would you know how to play Michael Kors as a trade? You see the gap. You have to determine, do I want to go long or short this? Again, I like the shorts. So Michael Kors was a short in the day, which I did. But I want to tell you that you use the rating system to determine if this is a long or a short. And that's how you know. And I did. I used my system that I created and I totaled the points. And I realized that Michael Kors was something I could short. I did short it. And the stock had a huge move on the day. Okay. And that's it. You just, all you need is one of these. And all you need is just one of these. And this is a really good one. And, and if you get one really, 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 really good one, you could, you, could, you could just make a living off of one of these kinds of things like once a week. Okay. Now, I named my system Golden Gas because it's a gap that has a high odds of working on the day. So that's why I called it that. And again, I'm the only one that has this system. I invented it for myself. Finding gaps are rated according to the 26 point golden gap rating system is really like finding gold in the market if you're shorting because it's opportunity. Opportunity because you're seeing and being able to predict that something's gonna move before it does it to know whether to go long or short it. And really the reason that it works is because it spots institutional money. Gaps are made by professionals. What do I mean? I mean institutions, people that run hedge funds, banks, okay? They are gaps that have a high odds of working on the day in the correct direction of the gap with a large momentum move. Because the only thing that can move something like Michael Kors is professional money, okay? Or what I call power money in the market. If everybody in here was in my live trading room for the day, we all shorted Michael Kors on the earnings announcement into the close, we'd never, we'd never create anything that would be even near like this, okay? So this is institutional money that makes something not only gap like this, but then also continue in this direction, which it did, which it kept falling, okay? And that is selling action. You've gotta have selling action to have good, good play in a short, if you're, if you're short. Just like you have to have real serious power money buying action if, in something if you want to go long, okay? Otherwise, you have something that doesn't really go anywhere and it just kind of flatlines. And again, because I want to make money every day I trade, I'm looking for momentum and that means the stock has to move. Now, institutional money, again, is really anything that is big, big money. Millions and millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, really. And that is what makes these gaps. The gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only. It's large institutional money. And that's why as a day trader or a swing trader or a core trader, you can make a lot of money trading the market. Because if you see what those people are going to do before they do it, you have a huge opportunity to profit. You will not make money if it's after the fact. You have to be able to see it before it happens. Okay, that's the key in trading. 
And that's one thing that many people don't know what to do. And when they take their trades, they look at it almost like a crapshoot, like a 50-50. I don't trade like that. I call it conviction. I have conviction when I take a trade. Let me let you see me here now. I call it conviction when I when I when I see a trade. When I see a trade, I, I call it conviction, where I see it and I want to do it and I like the trade and I take it. I never, never take anything feeling like it's maybe or it might work or something like that. I take it because I believe that it's going to work, not that it's not going to work. Okay. Now let's get back to what it's saying. Therefore, you need a way to help you pick the correct direction to play the gap, which is my rating system. And that's the confirmation the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, whether you're buying or selling, and then you play it. Gaps are an event, and they create a sense of urgency that's happening in the stock. And this doesn't matter if it's bullish or bearish, but we're talking about the shorts right now today. But it is forcing an action, and in the case of shorts, it's forcing the action to push the price down. Because you won't make money shorting something unless the price drops. Okay, the only way you will make money shorting is if you are right that the price will drop on the day, okay? And this is why gap trading is powerful because the panic that can happen and come in when people sell can look like that Michael Kors or even the other chart, which I'm going to show you here, the, the day chart of that in a minute with Fran. But trading gaps is a very powerful way to trade because you're trading on this side of the power of money. And it's really the only way you can get something to move in a big, big direction. This is what creates price we would not even we would not even be able to make money let's see if we can hold in here we would not even be able to make money at all as day traders if if there weren't institutions in the market it would you it did, i don't know if anybody ever wonders like why uh does everybody want to trade the u.s stock market like people all over the world they always want to trade the u.s market versus some of the other markets in different countries it's because of the volatility and the money that's actually in the U.S. market, okay? There's just so much of it, and it creates that volatility for you to play on. Now, getting back to the advanced technical analysis. I did discuss this today in the live trading room. The, the market is higher. How am I able to know this? Because I'm reading the gaps that are in the market. So as a sidebar, if you have a, if, this is just above and beyond trading. If you are in technical analysis, you can look at things that are in your 401k, in your investments, in your mutual funds. You can look at all kinds of things, even if someone else is managing your money, and determine based on what I would teach you, looking at the candlesticks and looking at the charts, if you are in a good investment. This is above and beyond even just day trading. Okay, This is just taking care of your own finances and things and looking at stuff. A lot of people get their statements, their retirement accounts. They just look to see if they have a gain or a loss in it or what, what their balance is. They don't really take the time to look over their investments. But that is something important to do. And using a system and a checklist is a very professional way to trade and to think about your money. And let me tell you something. The more serious you get about your own money and more responsible about it, the more uh, self-power you have to make choices for yourself to grow financially. And this may mean investing in something like trading, like having a trading account or something like my class, but it will give you that self-empowerment that you believe that you can move forward in your life when many, many people feel very stuck and they don't believe in themselves anymore or have they don't believe in their own abilities, actually, is what happens is people stop believing their own abilities to to make more money after they get to a certain point in their life. Uh, they feel like they've maximized the income that they're gonna get in their job, whatever they happen to be doing, and they don't wanna take the time to change careers, to make more money in a different career, and then they wonder how are they ever gonna get to the point where they wanna retire or do other things with their life. And I'm telling you that trading is a vehicle, and really money is a vehicle, and it's just, uh, it's just another vehicle to get you things that you want to accomplish in your life and things that you uh, want to spend money on and also to help other people. I'm trying my best to keep this stationary, but it's not working. So it's really the market is a vehicle for me to make money, okay? And it can be for lots of people, whether you do it for full-time or whether you do it for part-time.
So the purpose of the checklist, as I was saying, is to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, big moves in the day. Number three, early confirmation of the bias, which means that I determine if I like it very quickly into the open. And I'm also taking the trades before 10 a.m. Eastern time. Also, precise entries with good follow through and a good risk to reward. So my system is a multi-purpose system. It is a 26 point rating system that I teach in my class. And you can use it to trade stocks and play them as day trades intraday. However, the 26 point rating system can be used to choose a stock to take as a swinger for trade. And one of the reasons why the Golden Gap class is so unique is because the system can be used in multiple ways to trade one stock symbol. In other words, you can day trade it, swing trade it, or four trade it. You can use it in multiple time frames depending on your financial goals and not only that on your time of the day, whether short or long term. Maybe you don't have time to day trade and sit at a computer every day, but you do have time to take swing trades, okay? Gaps happen at night and in the morning in the pre-market. So even though you can't, you may not be able to sit there, you could take the swing trade in the gap. Whenever you can get online to take the trade in any area on your platform, you can do it at night, you can do it in the morning in the pre-market, or you can do it during the day. You still have to rate the gap to determine if it's a good short. Now, everything in the system is created with large institutional money, and that is how you're able to do it as a swing trade or a day trade. The concept is the same for the shorting. You're looking for the panic. So whether it's, whether it's for a day trade or swing trade, the concept is still the same for the shorting, okay? And this is one of the reasons that, that the system I teach is so valuable because you can use it for multiple time frames. It's all based on the same strategy, which is the gap. The same concept of the panic that you're looking at in the shorting, okay? You're looking for the selling that you can short into. You're shorting into the selling action and you're using technical analysis and that's it. And you don't have to spend time reading anything with fundamentals. You can trade also much more accurately if you understand the numbers of price. Whereas with fundamentals, there's really no high level of accuracy in that. Now you may love a stock and you may uh, get correspondence by reading, you might read five different articles about things and they all might be analysts that you really like and then they all kind of say the same thing and then you think, well, this is good here. But it's not, when you look at a candlestick or you're looking at price in something, you're looking at a chart in something, you just have that one thing to look at and that's it. And the price, though, is all that you need because it's telling you exactly what the price of the stock is. So that's why technical analysis gives me the conviction. And it's all because of the gap, okay? And shorting also gives me conviction to make money in the market because it happens quickly, the panic that creates the red in the market that means that you can make money very quickly. Now, I'm going to talk in detail here about some charts. Now, first, we're going to talk about the strategy which I was talking about earlier, which is gaps. Now, what is a gap? It just means the stock closes the night before here at 4 o'clock and opens the next day at 9.30 at a different price. This was Fran from last week, and that's what it did. It closed up here at 16-something and opened the next day here at 14-something. Okay. Now, I shorted this in the day. How did I know to short this? Because I looked at the rating system that I created, and determine from that that Fran would have selling action on the day, meaning that I knew that if I shorted it as a trader, I would have panic, red, and selling that would come into the stock and would continue the stock to push the price down. What makes that happen is institutional money, as I was just discussing. That's what makes it happen. Now, you can read in the candlestick here from the close to the open and the low in the day of the Fran, which was like 1330 something or whatever, that Fran actually had a dollar sum move drop off on the day. So you couldn't have made money going long this on the day. You could have only made money shorting this on the day. The momentum was down and it actually closed with a red body. Now again, you're looking at the, every one in here, every bar in here is a candlestick. I do briefly go over candlesticks in the class. If you're brand brand new and never traded, you'll, you'll learn them. If you traded before and you've traded for years, you're still going to learn how I look at candlesticks. But I will tell you, it's really the money that I'm reading, the money in here of what is happening that's moving the price action. And in the case of Fran, it's pushing it down. What is really important is that I'm trying to determine if Fran is going to have selling. If I had rated this Fran, this is a one-minute chart now. This is a daily. This is a one. 
But if I had rated the Fran for the 26 point rating system, if Fran had turned out to not rate 20 points or more, which it did, so I shorted it, but let's just say it didn't. What if it had rated a 15? I would not have shorted this. That a low, low rating would have told me one of two things. Either A, it's not going to work in either directional bias, or B, it's going to be a long, okay? And therefore, don't short it. But it did rate well. So I shorted this stock, and I was able to predict that the selling would come in based on the rating. I was able to predict that. And so that's how I take the day trade, and I take it down. And again, I'm getting in here very quickly in the morning, but then I'm getting out quickly too, which is a very nice thing. The entry time for this trade, and again, this is a day trade, was 9.31 a.m. The price of the entry was $14.19. Again, if you're day trading or even swing trading, you have leverage or buying power. But as a day trader, you have more leverage than as a swing trader. Depending on where your broker is, they will determine your leverage. You can ask them. But you don't really need $14.19 per share to short Fran because of the fact that you get leverage from the broker. Okay? Just so you understand that. The concept in day trading, you're looking for risk to reward, which means for every dollar I make, I'm looking to make three. Do I make $3 in every trade I take? No. Some is a little bit less. But for every dollar I risk, I'm looking to make three. Now, the risk in Fran was 21 cents. It had to do with where I took the short entry, which is at 14.19, and where I put the stop, which I'll show you in a minute. But I shorted 6,000 shares of this. This is a lot. Okay, this is a nice size. So I actually risked over $1,000 in this trade, almost $1,300. This is where you want to get to the point where you can be active and do this kind of trade so that you can really make a lot of money in the market, okay? But how do you get to this point? You have to learn what, you, what to do. You have to get good. Now, the exit was down in here. I got out at the low of the day, although I didn't get out in the 30s. It was around $13.49 and change. And my total profit was $4,125.86. Okay. This is a good trade. It was a 3 plus R trade. So I did make $3.08 for every dollar I risked in the Fran, which I risked $1,260. And actually, the low of the day was 36 something. So I could have made an extra, you know, six, seven hundred bucks, but it bounced so quick till I got it out of it. This was my profit. And, and there I'm showing you that's my profit. Okay. So for the amount of time that I spent in this trade to make over $4,000 is phenomenal. Okay. Some people don't make $4,000 and work in a month's time. And I made that in this trade here, and I entered it here, and I was out of it here. I was in it at 931, and I was out by 950. So in 20 minutes, my whole entire day was done. And if you didn't want to take a trade the rest of the week, you, could, you, might, you might not have. Okay. How can I take a trade like this with that much size, which was 6,000 shares, which is a, a really good advanced size to take at something at 931 into the open in a stock that's gapping down that may very well rally but this didn't how did i do that how am i able to do that day after day after day after day after day when i get a quality golden gap that rates 20 points or more per the 26 point rating system how am i able to do it because i have advanced technical analysis skills that tell me when i see fran on this daily chart in the morning when i roll out of bed gapping down that I have 100% conviction that it is going to sell off. And that's how I'm able to do it. Okay? And that's how I'm able to do it. Now, you can do this for bullish stocks too. But today we're talking about the idea of shorting. And what I love about shorting is the movement of the quickness. To be able to make this much money this quickly. Okay, and it is because of the concept of panic, okay? It is the concept of panic that makes it go like this. That is a very, very important thing to understand. So conceptually, again, this is common sense. Common sense tells you that, okay? Now, any questions at all about the Fran trade? I asked the room to to tell me the day of the Fran because I run a live trading room and everybody did the trade. 
I asked people if they wanted to share how much they made. Not everybody did, but of the people that shared how much they made, I totaled it up that the room of the people that shared, some people didn't want to tell me how much money they made, which was fine, made over $22,700 on the day. So my trading room of the people who shared the results made that much on the day of the Fran in 20 minutes. I told everyone where to take it and where to get out. You cannot join my live trading room unless you take my class. I made the decision when I started to teach people. It was a great decision because my investment in people of the time I spend with them is to turn them into good traders. And absolutely no one turns into a good trader just by taking orders from me in a trading room. You will never learn how to trade. If you, were, if you traded with me every day for a year in my room, you'd never, never, never learn what I do if you don't take my class. And if you're trading on a one minute chart, you really absolutely need to know what to do because I want you to not make any mistakes. I want you to do the right thing. And also, I want people to learn what I do because you know what? I'm not going to teach this forever. And, that, and, and I'm telling you the truth. I'm just being honest. I do enjoy teaching now. I do have a passion for teaching. But my real passion is the market. So although I may trade forever and ever and ever, and the market will always be part of my life, I will not teach forever. Okay. Now, Linda asked me, Linda, weren't you there? Linda, you were there, I thought. Linda just asked me a question. And Linda, I thought you were there uh, that day. Were you not there of the Fran day? Linda just asked me, how did I know where to get out of Fran? And I thought you were there, Linda. But maybe you weren't. You weren't there on that day. Okay. Linda just asked a question before I go back. Linda wanted to know, how did I know where to get out? Because I have targets. I have targets. And actually, you, don't, you can't determine the timing of when something goes to the target, Linda. But I can determine the targets. I can determine the targets on the day and something I call the dream target. Fran did not get to the dream target. The dream target for Fran was 13. But I will tell you the move that it had at the time that it had, it was big. And so because of that, and it did go to two of the targets that I had, I got out. Okay? Because you also have to money manage yourself, Linda. This stock makes a drop like this. And you're up money like this. You, you don't not get out. You get out. Okay? Like, this is, again, going back to what we were talking about, something else, about learning from someone like me that actually is a live trader. You don't want to be greedy. I say to people, don't be greedy. No piggies today. No piggy targets today. Like, first of all, that was the low of the day. Now, could it have gone to 13? Yes. 30 some cents. Are you going to get back 30 cents to make an extra 30 cents? No, that makes no sense. Again, common sense. Common sense and no piggies. You just make that kind of money, whatever it is, whatever size you had, huge, that fast, 20 in 20 minutes. 30 cents from the dream target. You got, you got to take it. You, you know what I mean? But it did actually go to two targets I had written down. But it could have gone to 13. It could have gone to the dream target. But you have to have common sense then. And I teach in the class exit rules on top of the targets where you will see how the stock is acting by reading the candlesticks and you will take it. Okay. And that was the low of the day. Now, why does shorting give you an edge? I kind of was talking about this, but I'm going to go into detail, more detail now because a lot of people don't know how to short. It's true. I taught myself how to short. I mean, sometimes I short and it looks if you, now Fran isn't a good example of that. <sighs> Michael Kors is kind of a good example of that actually. Sometimes I'm shorting and it looks like I'm shorting into the wind, into no man's land, but I have exact numbers and it all makes perfect sense to me. But it looks like I'm shorting into the wind. Shorting gives you an edge because not many people know how to do it. And even people that do aren't good at it. For some reason, and I have no idea why, people actually are scared to short. The concept of going long actually is something people can understand and really, really get. But the concept of shorting doesn't. Tom is asking me, why didn't I get stopped out? If I, got, I didn't get in the open. I got in at 931. And I did not get stopped out because my stop was not over the high. My stop was at 1440. So I didn't get stopped out. It went over the high of the day here, but my stop was at 1440. And I didn't get hit out because it never touched 14 and 40. 
or I had my stop. But if it had, I would have been out and I would have wanted to be out. Make sense? The stop did not go over the high here. Okay. Again, it goes back to technical analysis of the numbers. Of the numbers. So this actually, if you were looking at this, and Tom brings up a good point. If you were looking at Fran and saw it went over the high here, actually it went a boop over here. No, I think it was really here. This might have went one penny over here. But really when this bar rallied up here, which it really did go over the high on the third bar here, which is at 932, and closed green, some traders would have looked to buy Fran to fill the gap. Why would I not have done that? Because I rated the gap in Fran, and it rated more than 20 points per the 26-point rating system, so I am not going long Fran. And I'm not going long Fran if it goes over the high of the day, and I'm not going long Fran even if it stops me out, which it didn't. But I am not going long Fran. And by the way, if Fran had stopped me out at 1440, do you know that I wouldn't give it up on this? I would have stayed on top of this, and it would have worked. And even if I had gotten stopped out in the first trade, if the second one set up, I would have taken it. I... I literally said in the room on this day of the Fran, for those of you that were there, I said, I'm doing this no matter what it does. And I never, I don't say that about everything, I, I must tell you. But this was so good that I knew, I, I was like, I had in my mind, I was, didn't no matter what this did, I was doing it. Because I knew it would sell out. Because of the gap rating. Okay. It's the conviction in the gap rating system that tells me I'm shorting Fran. And I'm not buying it over the high. And I don't care about that little green teeny weeny candlestick or a green. And I don't care about the rally. And this is how you get the conviction to do it and stay with the trade. And stay with the trade in the right direction. And not flip it and not kill it and not go long it. Many people do not focus enough on getting good at one directional bias. I don't really care if you don't want to short. Go long. Learn my system. Flip the points. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't get good at doing one thing in one directional bias, you will never make money in the market. You cannot, you cannot ever, ever get good. You can't get good if, you're, if you don't have conviction in what you're doing, whether you're doing it. And I keep, like, this thing just is not holding. I, I'm trying here, but it's just not. You can't get good at doing one thing if you don't stick with that one thing. And what happens is, like, somebody will do Fran short. It, and then just, like, say, no, let me just put that another way. Someone will go long Fran. They'll go long it. It'll fail. Then they'll miss the short. Then they'll chase it for a bounce. They'll do ten other things with it. And at the end of the day, you have no money to show for anything. If a smidgen of a dollar barely covers your costs, and then you say to yourself, you, what do you have conviction in? When you look at yourself in the mirror and you look at your trading results, you're all over the place, and what do you have conviction in? You have conviction in nothing. You've got to have conviction in what you're doing. I'm trying. This isn't working here. I have to just figure it out. I'll figure it out later. Uh, you rejected it remotely? Well, I just took it off. But now I can't move my PowerPoint. It's stuck. Hold on. Okay. I have a slide up here. I'm just talking about percentage of return in day trading. Percentage of return in day trading is actually very high if you figure it out. I know people really, really love to figure out percentages that are investors and things, but Day trading, if you figure out the percentage, is actually high. Very, very high for the money that you will make with what you risk. Some of the people of that day of the Fran ended up making more than 50% of the balance in their account. So it's really, day trading is about risk to reward for the dollars that you risk. It's not about percentages. But I know people like to think in terms of that. Percentage really in trading is based on an R concept. An R is one risk unit, okay? It should be close to or equal the same for every trade you take. Like, in other words, you shouldn't risk $1,000 in one trade and $100 in another. You're not going uh, to have the same results then. I do use hard stops, okay, but many people don't know where to put a stop. They just don't. It is very important to know where to put a stop. It is important to use a stop. I use hard stops, and I will always use stops as long as I trade, okay. As long as I trade uh, my own account, and, 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 and want to make money and be profitable at the end of the month, I have to use a stop, okay? And that's why you have to learn how to do this. Don't be afraid of stops. They actually are good for you. 
If you think about the return on investment though, again, this is really something that it's based on our concepts. See, our concept worst reward in this was over three, but your return on investment on the day was 4%, so that's actually really good. So if your buying power you needed for Fran was 85,000 in buying power, this isn't cash, but it's buying power you get leverage from the broker, and you used a certain amount of buying power to take the amount of the Fran with the risk, you actually, your return on investment is 4%. If you make 4% every day in the market in five days a week, that means you're making 20% a week on your money. I mean, that's just enormous. But again, it's really about the R concept here. But I'm just trying to break it down for people that really want to understand percentages, okay? I do offer a long-term swing trade letter. And, and I just am showing you this here because this is uh, – an example of the power of money in a chart using technical analysis. This was Netflix, okay? Back in January, I called Netflix as a swing trade long. The dream target I gave on this day, on January 22nd, was $750 for the stock to go to this year. It's almost hit $700 last week. And, and it will get to 750 before the end of the year. And so if you took this trade, it was a huge return on investment. Now, this is longer term. This is also buying, not shorting. But I will tell you that this stock is moving ahead of the market. So talking about money, that means people are more heavily uh, invested in Netflix to the upside because the stock has had a move that has gone faster and bigger and stronger than even the market right now this year. The entry date of the swing trade was January 22nd. You could have entered on that day anywhere approximately around 410. Risk, if you just took 100 shares, you still would have had to risk $1,000 because it's a swing trade. And if you exited it, at 700 was one of the targets and almost got there. If you got out of it last week, you would have made $2,820. This is almost a 3R swing trade. And this is a phenomenal because swing trades, you're really very rare to get three risk units. When most people take a swing trade in something, they're looking to make one. If you're looking to make that, you could have made it and quickly gotten out of this here. But if you did this here and got out of it here, you actually missed this whole beautiful move up that it had in the middle of April. And then obviously you missed it getting to the target. And it's never looked back since here. And guess what this is? It's a bullish gap. It's a quality golden gap. It's a bullish gap that really would have rated 20 points or more to buy. Okay. Now, if you didn't have conviction, getting back to the conviction idea, getting back to the understanding of price analysis of money, if you bought the swing trade in Netflix here and you didn't get out, let's say you didn't get out of it here, it rallied up, you were out money, you thought you were singing and dancing, you didn't take it out though. As it comes in in this pull in here, it comes all the way down, all of a sudden now you're losing conviction. You don't understand what's happening. The stock is moving down, you were up. Now you've given back all the profit. You kill it. Maybe you kill a break even, maybe kill it with a small profit, maybe even kill it with a little bit of a loss because it based and based here and actually at one point went under the low of the gap. If you see this, say you end up killing it with a loss. Look what you would have made. It literally took off like a rocket. And so, again, how is anyone ever able to do anything in the market at all for profit consistently? You must have a system you follow. You need to know why you follow it. The full understanding of the knowledge of that gives you the conviction to take the trade and stay with it. And, and that's what you do. And you size yourself according to your risk that you can afford. And you stay with the trade. And you manage it accordingly to the targets or time. You know, maybe, maybe you decided you didn't want to take Netflix to the full-on target. Actually, 500 was one of the targets. So when this rallied up here, you could have gotten all out of it. But you wouldn't have let it retrace against you and kill it. And this is what many, many traders do because they don't have conviction in what they know. They do not understand how to read institutional money in the market. They become uncertain and scared and unsure of themselves and think then that they were wrong in buying this. And then they kill it with a loss and it goes on to work anyways. And this is how people then go back and forth with the trading for their whole lives, never really believing in anything. But I literally only trade one system, which is gaps. I use the rating system that gives me the conviction to take the trade and to follow it through and know that I'm right way more often than I'm ever wrong and let it play out and take the risk so that I can profit. If you're not willing to do that, I say, why trade at all? Because it's stressful if you don't know what to do. And you do need to learn what to do if you want to make this worthwhile. Otherwise, just do something else. Because this is not fun to be up money and then lose. 
And it's also not fun to be down money so many days of the month like many people are. And it's not fun to give money back to the market unless you have a purpose. And what is your purpose? Is your purpose that you're trying to invent your own system? If that's your purpose, go for it. I did it. I think very few people can do it. I don't know anyone else but me that has. I think it's challenging. And you better have a bankroll that's bigger than your eyeballs. And a lot of time in your life. And a lot of guts, too. So I say decide if you really want to do this. Ask yourself how badly do you really want to be successful in this. And if you do, then learn how to do it for someone that's good, like me, okay? Because I am really good at what I do. Now, I want to just read this here briefly. My swing trade letter dated January 22nd called Netflix to go to 750 as a dream target for 2015. Price of the entry call on that date was 410. As of June 10th, Netflix was at a high of 692.19. It almost reached 700 and it is within $58 away from the dream target that I called for the year and it is only June. So half the year is enough. To put it in terms of return and investment or percentages, which many people love to talk about, even though day traders don't think like this, we only think really in risk to R &R terms, Netflix increased 68% in four months. 68%! 68% in four months! That is outstanding performance in a stock. The stock moved $282 since January on my call, and that is outstanding. At the time I made the call on January 22nd, 2015, Netflix had not made a new high. and had never seen any number even near 600, let alone 700 or beyond in the chart. Therefore, in conclusion, I called Netflix to go to a number on the chart that it had never seen at the time that I made the call. This is something that I do over and over and over again, and I'm doing it in the market right now, too. In normal technical analysis, an analyst looks at a chart and uses past price action to predict future, future price data. I use technical analysis to trade, but I really focus on the gaps. Kramer looks at fundamentals. I don't. Even some analysts on TV look at charts. I look at charts too, but what I really look at is gaps in the chart. And not just gaps, golden gaps. I don't know of anyone on television or anyone in the news or anyone on the internet looking or talking about gaps and very few people that trade know how to analyze gaps. And even people that trade or look at gaps don't know what I know about gaps. And that is true, which is what makes me and my predictions of my system so special. There was no number, no past price data, no technical analysis past price data to analyze on the Netflix chart to predict it could go to $700 or even $600. So how was I able to predict this? by reading the gaps. And from my own gap analysis of my 26 point rating system, I can see what something is doing right now, if it's gapping, and predict what it will do in the future with a high degree of accuracy based on the gap. I hope everyone listened to what I just said there. Because if you learn my system, it is a window into the price analysis of what the money is going to do in effect in that stock in the future. The future time frame could be on the live day, which is a day trader is really all I care about. So I like to look at new gaps every day I trade. But if you are doing things for the longer term, okay, you can use the system to take the trade for a longer term trade, for a swing trade or an option trade. Okay. Understand? Any questions? It is really about looking at the bigger picture while living in the now. You, If you want to be a trader or change your life, find a way to make it work. I'm telling you, you got to take the leap and find a way to make it work. If you wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, you're never going to get there. It's always about excuses. I got to give myself credit for not making any excuses for myself and just deciding to do it. The bigger picture is you want a better lifestyle, more time for leisure, and honestly, at the end of the day, to work for yourself and work from home. So think about what your plan of action is. Number one, teach yourself, okay? And you could teach yourself and just lose as much money as you can in the market, as much money as you can stand until you figure it out. That could be your, your plan of action. Or number two, you learn from someone else. If you really want to trade and make money in the market, that's it. You only have two options. One, teach yourself and lose as much money as you can possibly stand until you figure it out. Or number two, learn from someone else. Which road do you want to take? I'm here to tell you that number two is easier and cheaper. Even if you end up taking 50 classes for over the course of however many years, you will eventually find someone you connect with if you keep at it. And, and that's where, like, actually how people have found me. 
they, they've taken class. I mean, I've had people that have taken classes before they met me. They have. They didn't learn how to make money. And now they're with me and they're learning how to make money with me. But I'm telling you the two is a cheaper road and it's a shorter road. And it's a road that at least you will be on knowing that through the process of learning, you're learning and your knowledge is acquiring. And when you're teaching yourself in the market, what happens is because you're so consumed with your own losses, and I know because I was there, you, you, you get in this mental state this mental state then where sometimes you don't you don't you miss stuff that you should be learning and focusing on because you don't have anybody else there to teach you the only person that was teaching me the market to be honest I didn't listen every day or I would have figured it out sooner or lost less so in my class I teach one solid strategy multiple entries and plays in the gaps how to trade the open booking money every day is day trades advanced chart analysis skills and really how to short in them and I teach you how to get conviction in your trading the market as a source of wealth I teach the 26 point rating system in the class and it teaches you what direction to trade the stock on the day. And again, I like to short. I like to short because I like selling action, because I like panic and because it happens quickly and fast and in the morning and my day is done every day by 11 a.m. Eastern time. I don't hold anything back in my class. I don't hold anything back in my teachings. I teach you everything you need to know to do it yourself. I teach you how to read the charts. I teach you what the targets are, the entries, the rating system. We go over the charts. I talk about the market. So if you really want to empower yourself to trade, my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks in a professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free. The class is online, and the date of the class is this weekend, June 20th and 21st, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The cost of the class is $34.99. If you would like to sign up, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. I am doing a bonus day three, which I only do like usually once a year I'm gonna do this bonus day on Monday so it would be live analysis of the gaps the day after which would be the Monday morning where we're gonna rate gaps in the room and I don't do that in the room usually in the morning I just rate them myself and then we trade but I'm gonna go through them and teach on the bonus day three which is Monday so this is a good opportunity to really do the class and then rate gaps right after live on the Monday I'm also offering the Wealth Manifestation course free for June. Anyone that does the Golden Gap class gets this class free. And I offer another class which is called the Trends course. This is for longer term trades. If you really want to swing trade, this is a class to take for that uh, to focus on the longer term. But you still need the rating system as well to pick the gap. But the longer term swing trades and core trades, I suggest people to have a separate trading account for from your day trading account so that you don't have two trades going on in the one account at the same time. And that's just my personal suggestion. And you can also use this for options. This class is July 28th and 29th from 12 to 4, and the cost of the class is $9.99. Again, it's the concept of the gap. This, just, this trends class just teaches you advanced analysis and longer term trends. If you want to do both for this month, I'm offering half off the trends class. You can do both the golden gap and the trends class. You get the wealth class for free. And you could do both for $3,999. And then I'm also doing the live trading the day after for the third day. Summer is a good time to trade as a career. It's raining outside right now, but it has been beautiful, beautiful days. And I've been done trading early and I have the rest of the day myself in Manhattan. So it is a nice living if you're a full-time day trader. Think about what your plan of action is to get there by the end of the summer. Okay? It's all about morning money, though, if you trade in the summer. The market is sideways many, many summer afternoons. So you want to learn a strategy that enables you to be out quickly. Okay. Let me just see if there's any questions and say goodbye to everyone. There you go. There I am. <laughs> oh, there I've disappeared. Does anyone have any questions at all? If not, you can email me if you think of something later, unless at the stockswish.com. Anyone have any questions? Any questions at all? I'm like a minute or two over. Thanks for letting me stay. Email me if you'd like more information. Any questions? Okay, great. Have a good evening, everyone. Email me if you have any questions. What if the stock is too whippy? Well, you have the stop in. You, you just have the stop in, Tom. I mean, I know what stocks are whippy, even if I haven't played them, although I played a lot of stocks in the market. But even if you don't know something is whippy or not, you can tell from the way the chart looks. 
So you can give something an extra cushion if you're worried about the whippiness. But I'll tell you that you, you still have to stop in. I mean, I'm not, not putting a stop because the stock is whippy. You have to price in the spread, which you need to know, okay? Average return, Joe, I don't know if you signed in late or something. It's about risk to reward. I'm looking for a $3 payout in every dollar that I risk. Some trades, though, go to 10-hour trades. Some I only make two. It's not about percentages for day trading. You might have missed that when I reviewed it. But I did take the webinar. You can go into YouTube and watch it. What if the spread between the bid and the ask is too wide? Well, you cannot take something if, you, if you're uncomfortable with it. I don't really have any parameters for that. Like if I, I, if I see something that's like a 30 cent spread, like I'm not, I'm not exactly excited about that, unless, it, unless it's something like Netflix or something I know that has a big spread and I've traded before and I'm familiar with. But I mean, you can have your own parameters. You say, I don't want to do this because it's too spready. But that's up to you, okay? All right, thanks everyone. I gotta go now that Kathy's gonna boot me. Have a good night, everyone. You're welcome.